Okay, uh, he was described here as one of the first graduates of the St. Luke's College of Medicine, William H. Quasha Memorial, who took a combined program in Master of Science in Molecular Medicine and Doctor of Medicine. The founding president of the St. Luke's Molecular Medicine Society and the president of the St. Luke's College of Medicine, William H. Quasha Memorial, class of 2017. He had previously served as the National Executive Vice President of the Association of the Philippine Medical College Student Network. And he just recently passed the Physician Licensure Exam this last September. Okay, so let us give our undivided attention to the man of the hour, Carlo Kalayag, MD. Thank you for that kind introduction. Firstly, I'd like to thank, of course, the organizers, especially Franz, for inviting me here to talk in front of you. It is a privilege and an honor to, to be speaking in front of uh, our juniors here in AUP. Uh, I've, I've always wanted to visit your campus, especially during the first time when I met the first batch of AUP medical students two or three years ago. Uh, but since I was a clerk then and in, an intern, it was not really logistically possible. But when Franz messaged me just a couple of days ago and you know, he invited me here, uh, just within a split of a second, I said, gee, <laughs> I'm here now. I mean, I, I live in QC, but what is 70 kilometers between friends? <laughs> Actually, yeah, it's, it's really a privilege being here. Uh, I actually have uh, an exam tomorrow for my residency at 9 o'clock, but yeah, it, it, this weighed more and yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to speak in front of you. Anyway, uh, yeah, the title of my talk is uh, a 5 plus 1 star physician. It's not really a lecture on how to be a 5 plus 1 star physician, but it's more of a, a little sharing on uh, a person who went on a journey to be one. So that's me, Carlo Castillo. So, when, this, when did this journey start? Ah, there. <laughs> yeah, that was me 22 years ago. I've always wanted to be a doctor then. Do you remember that time where we, we had uh, this? Metaudon, uh, parang yearbook or ano uh, metaudon. Pasa the, the the one we fill in with our but favorite color, favorite coat, ganyan. And then what you wanted to be when you grew up. And then I answered, I wanted to be a doctor. Well, there are no doctors in the family. I was born to two engineers. Uh, my brother is an engineer. My sister is a sales lady. No, I'm kidding. She works for SM, so we kid her as a, a sales lady. But there were no doctors in the family at all. There were no uh, members of the family who were in the healthcare industry, so it would probably be there first. Back then, I wanted to be a doctor, but you know, grade, ano ba to? preschooler grade one, and it was kind of uncertain. I think I just wrote it just to have an entry on the yearbook. I was lucky enough to have my education uh, under scholarship. So I was enrolled in grade school in a Catholic school in Paranaque. And then afterwards, I took up my secondary education in a science high school in Manila. And back then, uh, I didn't really know what to do. So it was just a big arena in front of me and there's so much uncertainty uh, ahead of me. And this probably wouldn't be a, a reality uh, back then. So after I graduated from high school, I took up my BS degree in the University of the Philippines in 2006. Back then, when I was applying, I was still lost. When we were choosing uh, what course to take up in college, I was just, you know, eliminating. Ay, ayoko ng engineering, di ako magaling sa math. Ayoko ng uh, ganito, ganyan. And then it just boiled down to uh, just a few options. And then I saw this course. Wow, ang sarap pakinggan. BS Molecular Biology and Biotechnology. Wow, para akong sasambahin pag kinuha ko yun. So I took that because it was amazing. But you know, I didn't really want, I didn't really want to go there. It was just, you know, a 16-year-old child deciding for his future. And yeah, why not BS MVP? So yeah, I took up um, BS MVP in the University of the Philippines. So as, yeah, majority would be molecular. But as you know, as the years passed by through college, I was yet still uncertain what I really wanted to do. 
And then I graduated in 2010. So there were several options ahead of me. We can uh, take up medicine. It could be a pre-med uh, course. Uh, we can go into the academe and teach, be a, a scientist or a researcher. But you know what happened to me a year after? I saw myself oops, in the cover of Chalk Magazine. So I was lost. I really didn't know what to do. So I had to explore. Imagine I am a, a molecular biologist by profession, but I saw myself, you know, uh, doing sidelines. And I was like, what, 20 kilograms ago? <laughs> and I went into different occupations. I did some freelance writing. I was kind of emancipated. So I didn't really have that parental support. So I had to, you know, uh, earn for myself. So I went into several occupations like freelance writing. I went into teaching. I went into what? Modeling. I went into theater, you know, just to survive, survive the days. But, you know, it, it's just spreading myself too thinly. And back then, again, there's still this uncertainty on what I wanted to do. So imagine, even I was what? Uh, I was around 22 or 21 back then. I was still at a loss. So it's never too late for you to determine what you really want in life. It, it will just come later on. But, you know, I have to get back on track and I decided to take up my master's degree in molecular medicine at the St. Luke's College of Medicine. And that's when I found one of my, or one of the things that I'm really passionate about. Remember Serge mentioning a while ago, what is it that you are passionate about or what is your advocacy or what do you really want to do in life? And you know me, what's my passion? I wanted plants. No, no. Are you familiar with this plant? One word, two, four syllables. It's the, the plant they boil in, and they use it in treating dengue. Tawa tawa, right? I'm happy you know about it. So, of course, we know about dengue. It's a viral illness. Being viral, it's just treated symptomatically. Just hydrate the patient or probably give paracetamol for fever and then that's it. But you know, some folklore, some you know, hearsay uh, tells some of our patients that by drinking uh, a concoction of boiled leaves of tawa tawa, you would be quote unquote cured uh, from dengue. And that would be my research uh, as, a, as a scientist. I've been working on dengue for the past seven years of my life. I have several researches, and one of it is to look for a cure for dengue. And, I would probably hypothesize that it could be found in this medicinal plant, Tawa Tawa. So I'm looking for the molecular mechanisms behind it. So that's one of those things that I, I am passionate about, uh, probably like six or seven years ago. I found myself in a niche looking for a potential cure for dengue. You know, we have several specializations. We have several things that we wanted to do in life, but we have to find our own niche the thing that we really like to do. And that's what I wanted to do. I, do. I vowed, what, two or three years ago that in my lifetime, I would want to eradicate dengue. And I think that's my calling as a person. So you have to have that dream as early as then. So that's just one of my, uh, my advocacies. Now, to continue further uh, learning, especially in the clinical sciences, I decided to take up uh, medical school with the St. Luke's College of Medicine. So this is my batch, the class of 2017 of St. Luke's. I'm their, their daddy, I'm the class president. And I am very proud that all of us, all 83 of us, passed the recent licensure exams. And you know, it's, it's not just my pride that I passed the board exams, but it's just the daddy in me that all of my kids made it. You know, I'm a little bit older than them. But you know, just the whole batch having a 100% rating in the, the PLE just makes me uh, even way happier than I should be. Because you know, it was all in. Our, our tagline was all in 2017. And really, we made it through. And I believe most of you here are medical students, first year, second year, and I think the, the first batch uh, are now third year students. And I should say that medical school is really one of the toughest moments in your life. Oftentimes you would see your friends traveling or, you know, buying the things that they like. And you, you are stuck in your room studying for hours, you know, especially when you have your clerkship and internship. You know, my record was that I haven't slept for six to eight hours straight. You know, I just had micro naps. Alam mo yung nagtutulog habang naglalakad. You know, you'll be learning that. Or the longest would be like 10 minutes, quick nap, you know. But, you know, 
68 ilang araw yun. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know math anymore. But yeah, that's it's probably more than two days, and that's uh, that's something that you you went into. So really, pursuing medicine is is something that you you should be sure about. Now, I've also been a med student before, and through these years, it was really a struggle for us to to make make it to the finish line. But one important lesson that I've learned in med school is that it's not just about you know the knowledge that you've learned, all of those things that you have to to acquire for you to pass the licensure exams, but it's also the bonds that you develop in medical school. I think one of the major reasons why we made it through is because we are a tight batch. Okay, so. All of you would be uh, having your exams, going into rotation soon, but it will be lighter if you spend it with your friends, with your batchmates. Because kayo kayo lang din naman yung magtutulungan eh. You're just, you know, I think the first batch is just a little more than 10. And, di ba, imagine yourself, you'll be on duty, mag-isa ka lang, di ba, versus what, hundreds of patients. And it would really help if you, you know, talk to your friends, you just... You know, just have some few seconds with them. Even in the first year and the second year, uh, I'm not sure if you do transcriptions or if you do your notes, but you, you make it as a batch because that would be your reference in the future. So you make it as, as nice as possible because it's a team effort, it's a class effort for all of you to, to graduate on time. It would be uh, it would the develop the the bonds that you would be formed that would that you would uh, form since first year would be forever until you graduate until you go into your your clinics in the future. So uh, form your bonds with your your classmates as early as now because kayo kayo lang din naman yung magtutulungan. Now so yun nga we just graduated this year we're on to our different paths already but still the bond of our batch would be there. So yeah, this is me. So as I was introduced earlier, uh, I took up my MD and my MS at the same time. And Serge was asking me, uh, how is that possible? So it's just two different degrees. But you know, I would always tell him that I think uh, it's all about prayers. You know, I really prayed a lot during, during those seven years. It's not really, you know, surviving through the days, just getting through each day, but it's, it's, a, it's a big factor if you trust in, in God and you know that whatever you're doing is God's will. So I pray around like five to seven times a day and I, I get my strength through the days by, you know, asking help from God. And that would, uh, would be the reason why I survived through 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 uh, these two degrees, so I'm happy right now because uh, the MSMD program is already being developed in our college. So hopefully there will be future uh, people who would pursue the same. Uh, medicine, because right now it's not really just you know geared towards the clinical side, but there should be a research aspect of it. I've been toured a while ago in your campus, and I've heard that there's this project on uh, citronella, if I'm not mistaken. So. Uh, it's a good practice if you develop your own research as early as in med school because if you graduate your MD, it would be plus points if you would have a research on your own. Diba? Kasi right now, again as I've mentioned, medicine is not just purely clinical. You get back to the bench side and learn, learn more things in the lab, for example, by developing your own research because it will translate into clinical practice. So it would really be a merger between the two. So I really admire the efforts of your faculty, the students here who try to develop their research even if your school is young. Now, what are these numbers? 30%, 30%, 40%. We just passed the board exams, and these numbers is uh, our what do you call this? Uh, what I did uh, for me to, to be able to make it through the board exams. Thirty percent of the of how I answered the board exams would be found in the handouts in your notes. You will be having probably your review school before your licensure exams, and thirty percent would be found there. So it's just you know uh, reinforcing what you've learned. 30% comes from experience, okay? That's why in med school, you have to really make the most out of all of your patients, out of all of your, ex, uh, your encounters. Because from that, you would be able to make a hugot in answering the board exam. So it's really, you know, a consolidation of everything you've learned. And you know what's 40%? Again, it's 40% prayers. Because, you know, it's the board exam. It's not really that objective. You'd never know what will come out. But you would find yourself, you know, not knowing what to answer. Sometimes you find yourself too tired already of studying. 
But if you pray and just, you know, let it let go and let God, you will be able to make it through the, the entire exams. When I was studying for the physician, uh, for our licensure exams before, uh, we were a group, four of us, uh, group mates, and then we stayed in one place uh, so that we can, you know, someone would wake us up so that we'd not be late in the board exams. But most of the time, we'd find ourselves praying, praying before studying, praying after studying, praying before we leave uh, for the board exams because I think that's our, our number one weapon. Uh, we would not be able to answer the, uh, the, the exams if it weren't for, for the intervention of, of, of God. So really, I would emphasize at this point that no matter how much you learn about uh, whatever there is in med school, you just have to put God in the center and you will make it through the licensure exams. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with this. Uh, this is the characteristics of a five-star physician. And, you know, I made a mnemonic for it. So it's Pearl, so physician. So we are healers, of course, being MDs. We are educators who seek never-ending knowledge about our field. We are administrators. We are managers. We are good communicators. We're not just learned and excellent, but we are also good in the non-academic ways. We are researchers, as I've emphasized earlier. We're not only contented with what we learn clinically, but we have to seek more than what is available. And we are leaders. We are social mobilizers, just like Serge, who really is in his field. So we have to develop these five qualities in order for us to be a five-star physician. But just like my title earlier, we're not just merely five-star physicians, we are five plus one-star physicians. So let me just add to the mnemonic. So we don't just want to have a pearl in ourselves, but we want to have pearls. We also want to be spiritual beings. I'm sure I've emphasized already enough that it's really a major factor in order for you to be the best physician that you want it to be. You have to be a physician who's excellent in whatever you know, medically and clinically. You have to be a physician who has full integrity, who incorporates professionalism in, its, in his practice. And of course, to top them all, you should be a physician who is kind and compassionate. Hindi porket matalino ka, magaling ka sa books, you are a good physician. But the best physicians would be the good physicians who are kind and compassionate about their patients. And lastly, of course, you have to be a spiritual, God-fearing physician. And that would characterize a well-rounded physician. And that for me would be a 5 plus 1 star physician. Again, just remember, it's just pearls. P, physician, E, educator, E, administrator, R, researcher, L, leader, and S, spiritual being. Now, let's just have a little activity. I want all of you to close your eyes. Just a few seconds, close your eyes. Right now, at this moment, I want you to imagine how you were, or what were you, 10 years ago. Okay, 10 years ago, where am I? Uh, am I what, a high school student, a college student? Was what, what was I doing? Am I studying? Am I what, playing video games? So imagine what was then back uh, 10 years ago. Now, continue to close your eyes. Imagine yourself now 10 years from now, okay? 10 years from now. Where am I? Am I already a, a licensed doctor? Am I already a specialist? Do I have a, a husband or a wife or kids? Diba? Where am I 10 years from now? Okay? And you would, you know, just, just dream big. No? Even if it seems so impossible at the moment, just, you know, think of what you wanted to be 10 years from now. Right? Okay, so again, now open your eyes. Now, this is the point when I go to the audience <laughs> and ask, what did you think about when you closed your eyes? So, the lucky ones are the ones in front. So, let's have a volunteer. So, again, let's have, what's your name? Mariel, you're a med What year? First year. All right, so let's have Dr. Mariel here. So, again, can I ask? Uh, what did you imagine? What were you, uh, how were you 10 years back then? Ten years ago, I am a first year high school student. And then? So first year high school. Ten years from now? Um, 
10 years from now, I'll, hopefully, I am a surgeon. Wow. <laughs> surgeon, alright. But it's not, it's not bad, but it's so difficult. You know, my lowest grade in the, the board is surgery. <laughs> I never, it's like an, an outlier lowest grade. You see, I, I never really imagined myself in surgery. You know, during ORs, parang pinipilit ko lang yung sarili ko. Like, oftentimes, parang uh, just a tear fell. <laughs> parang pinipilit ko lang, no? we just have to survive it. So, I'm not really on the, the surgery side. Alright, so sige, thanks, Marielle. Oh, let's have another volunteer. How about here naman? Sige, sir. What's your name? Um, first year post. How are you 10 years ago? 10 years ago po. Uh, grade, grade, first, mga grade, grade 6 first year. And I see myself as being very fat. <laughs> 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Yeah. After, okay. Um, from now, uh, ko po, I'll cure AIDS. <laughs> That's very, very noble and very relevant right now. If you've heard, there's already a potential treatment for HIV. It started, you know, very little, and it's now uh, on the latter stages of clinical development. So why not? You can start small, and many more in 10 years would be, you know, uh, the doctor who would discover the, the cure for AIDS. Right? And you would have, like, what? A name, uh, what, an asteroid name after you. So, you know, it's just Tom Burks of it. Yeah, he mentioned that, I just remembered that, uh, 10 years ago, you imagined yourself very fat. You know, during the board exams, most of us got fat. You know, I gained 25 pounds in the past three months because of the board exams. You know, so brown funny because, like, for example, when you're studying, and then I dropped my highlighter, and then I was like, ah, hindi ko makuha. Nakaharang yung chan ko. So, hindi na kaya. It's like, you know, uh, it's just like, it's stress eating. You know, like, what, like, kilay is life, but food is life first. So I don't care, like, it's just eat and eat, and it's just bahala na, diba? It's, it's food, diba? And I remember this one moment where we had the board exams, our first day, I was very excited. So I had all my stuff in my table, and then, you yeah, know, I was just starting board exams, and then I, I sat down, and so I was, you know, it's game na, game face mode, diba? And then I sat down, and then suddenly, plunk, natanggal yung butonis ng, ng coat ko. And so I was, oh my, man. But yeah, it doesn't mind, you know, what's a uh, fat dog or from being a licensed physician. So yeah, the, the dieting would come later on. But yeah, you know, uh, don't mind about, you know, your physical selves. It's nice to eat. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, it's nice to hear from some of you that you've, uh, you've imagined yourself 10 years from now at, as this person. Imagine 10 years ago, diba? who, would, who would have thought you'd be medical students at this moment, diba? 10 years from now, if you feel that you'd become a surgeon or, you know, you'd find for the cure for AIDS, diba? It's still possible. It starts by, you know, believing in a dream and it would be possible. Because anything is really possible, just have to dream and strive for that, you know, that to happen. So, ako, I didn't imagine myself being a doctor at this moment. But it started from a little dream and eventually it came to that point when I actually realized it. So, just, you know, a personal story with me. Eh? Ten years ago, I was a criminal. <laughs> I got caught, right? 18 na me. It was my 18th birthday. <laughs> yeah. And then, long hair. Nakakahiya. <laughs> you know, I just crammed my presentation a while ago. I was in uh, Starbucks in Tagaytay. So, long in place. So, and the pressure on his search, my presentation daw. Oh, okay, presentation. Yeah, just, you know, browse through my old photos and, Uy, may sangga, no? <laughs> so, <laughs> long hair pa ako. Then I was part of the, uh, what do you call this? Uh, anak bayan before in UP. So, puso pa dating yung long hair, ganyan, ganyan. So, yeah, I had long hair then. So, yeah, I was 18 years old back then. Really lost on what to do. Just do whatever I want. Happy go lucky. You know, that, not really cared about the future. But you know, 10 years from now, I would imagine myself like this. Nuts joke. <laughs> joke lang, I'm kidding. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> I tried, but you know, may mga bagay talaga na kahit pagtsagaan mo, hindi mo talaga makakuha. <laughs> so, yeah. But anyway, this is my point. If you're familiar with this, this is what you call a vision board. <laughs> Although, nandito pa rin yung picture niya. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what's a vision board? It contains what you see uh, yourself in few years from now. 
It's a, uh, it's a, uh, siguro mga ganito katangkad, mga siguro mga three feet by two feet, and I post it on the wall of my my room, and it contains everything that I want to happen ten years from now. So, for example, here I wanted the uh, happiness snacks. I, I wanted my own car, my sports car. I wanted a Pomeranian. I wanted to ha have a house in Vegan. If you've have gone to Vegan, so it's my favorite place in the in the world, the universe rather. But yeah, it's 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 a special place in my heart. So I wanted a house there. I wanted twins. I wanted you know, a body like that. <laughs> I wanted to look for the cure for dengue, you know, all of these are contained in this vision board. And that's sort of one of my assignments to you. If you can make one for yourself and post it in your room, you don't really have to think about it. You know, just what comes out of your head. I want to be a, what, a, a gazillionaire. Diba? Just put there, gazillionaire. In Malay natin, 10 years from now, diba? you'll become a gazillionaire, diba? if that's possible. Right. So, you know, just as simple as, you know, I want to, to have a, uh, oops, I wanted to have, uh, yeah, a watch, right? So, just as simple as that, to bigger dreams like, you know, I wanted to have my own show, right? I've been in theater for three years, but, you know, the schedule doesn't really fit with med, so I had to, to let go of it. But, you know, in 10 years, I really want to have another show. You now, by doing this, you would be reinforced every day that you have this goal in mind, that I wanted to be this person. And you know, slowly by slowly, by having you know, these short-term goals, eventually you would reach that. And it's just a proud moment. 10 years from now, let's say whatever our friends here said, and then you'd be able to achieve them. It's such a feat for you. So just dream big, create this vision board. It doesn't really have this be this big. But you know, it can just be a little note in your notebook or you can just have you know, some little snippets or little pictures in your notebook and just look at it every day so that you'd be guided to dream big. And it's possible. 10 years ago, you don't know that you would be a medical student right now. Why not? Why not dream of being a surgeon 10 years from now? And it would be uh, possible. So yeah, that's my vision boy. So anyway, so again, it just starts with uh, passion. One parting word that I would tell you is that one important thing that I have already included in my persona is that I always believe that if you love something, you will always make time for it. No excuses. I hope that the reason why you're here being medical students is that because you want to be a doctor, of course. I remember that time when we were asked, what do you want to be? Of course, the cliche answer would be, I want to be a doctor, that's why I'm a medical student. But you know, I answered, uh, I wanted to be a husband. <laughs> it's a different, it's a different, uh, it's, a, it's a, another way to look at it. I wanted to have, you know, a family with kids. You know, I wanted to be a physician. Probably with a television show, but you know, it's 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 a it's a wide dream ahead of you. And if you want something, you go for it. Okay, no excuses. Sometimes na katamad na magara. Minsan pinipilit mo na ni sarili mo, di ba? Pinagkakasya mo sa isang uh, bagay na hindi ka naman kasya, di ba? Parang it's hard to push yourself to something na ayaw ka naman, di ba? So you really have to have that passion in you. Day one palang, now palang. And then you go for it, okay? Love what you're doing, okay? If you love it, you always make time for it, okay? And of course, there would be challenges along the way. Oftentimes, you would see yourself crying or, you know, being stressed. Uh, I think in med medical school, in total, I've cried um, so mga 10 times already. You know what I usually do if it's already overflowing? I you know, just stay in the corner and then bigana na mga fetal position na lang ako. <laughs> and then a tear fell. <laughs> oh, besh pa document naman. <laughs> so, <laughs> eh, kasi, you know, it's just so stressful. But no, you have to really remember why you were here. And if ever you find yourself in a position wherein, you know, it seems that it's so impossible, just always remember the reason why you are still holding on, okay? The reason why you are still here. You want to be a doctor, then go for it. You want to be a researcher. You want to achieve all of those things in that vision board. So you have to really be passionate about it. 
So for me, uh, I love kids, so I'll be taking up pediatrics uh, at St. Luke. So yeah, I have an exam tomorrow. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's uh, it's really a passion in me to to treat kids, especially uh, who have dengue, because I really love dengue ever since, and you know it's really you know my calling for me to 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 work uh, in that field. So pediatrics would provide me uh, the clinical experience for me to be able to reach that goal. So, just a few quotes before I end by Marcel Proust. <laughs> the real voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. Sometimes we are afraid to set ourselves free. We wanted to go on a voyage out there, but it's just difficult for us to leave the shore because there might be sharks along the way. But you know, but just staying at the tip of the cliff, you know, and just jumping and screaming out that you can do it, eventually you would meet that goal. It's just a matter of perspective. Do not be afraid to seek new voyages. Instead, be courageous and take this, you know, as a step towards reaching your dreams. And again, you have to start now. Every dream starts little, okay? Again, just to echo what Serge mentioned earlier, you really have to find out what you are passionate about. And once you have found that out, start now. Because, kung hindi tayo kikilos, sino ang kikilos? Kung hindi ngayon, kailan pa? By no other than, Vilma Santos. Alright? That's all. Thank you everyone and have a great night. Thank you, Doctor. Now, this is the time for our question and answer portion. Do, do you have any question from the audience? Mga gusto niyo itanong, mga damdamin niyo, kailangan mga hugot, pwede niyo itanong sa ating doctor. Okay. Meron po ba? Okay, if there is none, let us give a round of applause for our Dr. Castillo for that very wonderful lecture. Okay, for this moment, we will now be having um,